Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. At the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, the Qing dynasty in China was in a state of turmoil. After the prosperous reigns of emperors Kangxi and Qianlong, the dynasty gradually entered a period of decline, plagued by both internal strife and external threats, resulting in social unrest, particularly after the Opium Wars. The Qing government repeatedly suffered defeats at the hands of foreign powers, leading to territorial concessions, indemnities, and a loss of national dignity. This caused the government to lose the trust and support of the people. Emperor Guangxu attempted the Hundred Days Reform, but it ended in failure due to opposition from conservative forces. And Empress Dowager Cixi regained control of the government after the reform was aborted. During this period, China was filled with contradictions and instability. And the invasion by the Eight Nation Alliance became a key event that symbolized this chaotic era. In 1900, the Boxer Rebellion broke out under the slogan, Support the Qing, Destroy the Foreigners. The Boxers, along with the Qing army, fought against foreign forces. However, the Qing army was no match for the powerful military might of the Eight Nation Alliance. The foreign powers invaded Beijing, pressing into the heart of the Qing government. Realizing that the situation had spiraled out of control, Empress Dowager Cixi decided to flee Beijing, taking Emperor Guangxu and some of her ministers with her. Cixi's flight was a humiliating ordeal. Historical records state that when the Eight Nation Alliance stormed into Beijing, Cixi and her entourage fled in haste. Emperor Guangxu's favorite concubine, Consort Zhen, who had supported the emperor's reforms, was killed and her body dumped into a well due to Cixi's suspicion. Cixi's group fled hurriedly and eventually made their way to Xi'an in Shangxi province. This escape not only exposed the incompetence of the Qing government but also left a disgraceful mark on Cixi's extravagant lifestyle in history. During her escape, the Chiao family from Qi County in Shangxi provided crucial refuge for Cixi. The Chiao family was a prominent Shangxi merchant family in the late Qing dynasty. Although not the wealthiest of all, the Chiao family enjoyed great renown in both Shangxi's business circles and across the nation. Their business primarily centered on Piaohao, an early form of financial institution responsible for deposits, withdrawals, and loans. In the commercial world of the Qing dynasty, the Chiao family held a prestigious reputation. The most famous leader of the Chiao family was Chiao Zhiyong, a legendary figure among Shangxi merchants. Not only was he skilled in business, but he also understood the nuances of dealing with people and maintaining relationships with officials. Through his exceptional business acumen and strong ties with the government, Chiao managed to keep the Chiao family thriving despite the instability of the late Qing period. Cixi's arrival certainly posed a challenge for the Chiao family. But Chiao Zhiyong's intelligence enabled him to turn this crisis into an opportunity further solidifying the Chiao family's status. When Cixi and her group arrived in Shangxi, they faced enormous pressure to survive. Having fled with limited resources, Cixi's luxurious lifestyle habits were hard to change. And in such perilous times, she urgently needed a large sum of money to sustain herself and her entourage of officials. At this critical moment, the Chiao family became her lifeline. Despite the Chiao family's vast fortune, they were still under tremendous pressure from Cixi's arrival. Cixi requested a loan of 100,000 taels of silver from the Chiao family, a staggering amount for any business at the time. Chiao Zhiyong understood all too well that this so-called loan was a mere facade, as there was no possibility of ever recovering the money. Refusal would have dire consequences potentially leading to the family's ruin. Faced with no other choice, the Chiao family had to comply. However, Chiao Zhiyong was not content with merely acting as a benefactor. He understood that if he could seize this opportunity, the Chiao family could not only avert disaster but also potentially expand its influence in the business world. 
Thus, he began to carefully plan, devising ways to gain more returns through this loan. During the reception arranged by Chiao Ziyong, although Empress Dowager Cixi was down and out, she was still the Empress Dowager who once ruled the Forbidden City with an air of superiority. The Chiao family treated her with the finest silk and exquisite meals, and even tailored a new set of court attire according to palace standards. In this atmosphere, Cixi's mood was lifted. And she asked Chiao Ziyong what he wished for in return. Chiao Ziyong had already made up his mind. He wasn't solely after silver, he hoped that through Cixi's influence, the Chiao family could lift the restrictions imposed on their banking business by the Shangxi local government. At the time, the local government, aiming to prevent private capital from growing too large, had suppressed the development of banking houses, which threatened the Chiao family's business empire. In front of Cixi, Chiao Ziyong made a seemingly simple but deeply meaningful request, he asked her to inscribe the words, Fuzhong Langhuan, a blessed place of literary treasures. On the surface, it was just four characters. But their significance was extraordinary. Some historians have remarked that Chiao Ziyong's request for the inscription, Fuzhong Langhuan, was a carefully thought-out decision. Fuzhong, blessed place, symbolized that the Chiao family's assistance to Cixi was an act of benevolence. Hinting that the Chiao family was her blessed land, helping her through difficult times. Langhuan refers to a mythical library of priceless treasures. Representing the Chiao family as not only wealthy merchants but also a family rich in cultural heritage. In traditional Chinese culture, merchants were often regarded as lower class especially in feudal society, where many scholars and officials looked down upon them, believing that they were only interested in profit and lacked cultural refinement. By using the term Langhuan, Chiao Ziyong was elevating the Chiao family's social standing, subtly showing Cixi that his family not only had wealth but also knowledge and culture, which was the highest recognition for a merchant. Though Cixi was not skilled in calligraphy, she understood Xiao Ziyong's intention. The Xiao family's current situation was far from smooth, and Cixi's support could change everything. In the end, Cixi agreed to Xiao Ziyong's request and personally inscribed the characters, Fuzhong Langhuan. This inscription was not just a piece of writing. It was an invisible past that ensured the Xiao family's status in the business world for years to come. Soon after, upon her return to the palace, Cixi fulfilled her promise to Chiao Ziyong. The local government in Shangxi, which had imposed numerous restrictions on the Chiao family's banking business due to concerns about the growth of private capital threatening the government's financial authority, lifted these restrictions under Cixi's influence. More importantly, Cixi entrusted the Chiao family with the management of some of the court's banking operations further expanding their business. As a result, the Chiao family's commercial empire reached new heights with Cixi's support. They not only became the leading merchants in Shangxi but also one of the most influential business families in late Qing China. None of this would have been possible without Chiao Ziyong's wisdom and Cixi's protection. However, with the fall of the Qing dynasty, the Chiao family's golden era also gradually came to an end although their commercial empire no longer exists. The architectural wonder they left behind, Chiao family courtyard, remains an important window for future generations to understand the glorious history of Shangxi merchants. The Chiao family courtyard, located in Qixian County, Shangxi, was first built during the reign of Emperor Qianlong of the Qing dynasty and was expanded several times, eventually becoming a large and intricately designed complex. The courtyard is majestic, with architectural styles that blend traditional Confucian culture with the unique spirit of Shangxi merchants. The Chiao family courtyard is not only a symbol of wealth and status but also a microcosm of Shangxi merchant culture. The buildings feature exquisite carvings in stone, wood, and brick, showcasing the Chiao family's cultural pursuits and business ethos during its peak. Additionally, the courtyard reflects traditional Confucian thought, 
with the structure and layout emphasizing principles of feng shui and etiquette, demonstrating the family's commitment to preserving traditions and ethics. Today, the Chiao family courtyard has become an important cultural heritage site in Shangxi and China. Symbolizing the golden era of Shangxi merchants and ancient Chinese commercial civilization. As a cultural attraction, it draws countless visitors and sparks interest in and research into the history of Shangxi merchants. Through exploring the Chiao family courtyard, one can deeply appreciate the wisdom, courage, and pioneering spirit of Chinese merchants during the late Qing and early Republican periods. The Chiao family courtyard has witnessed Cixi's visit. The decline of the Qing dynasty. The rise and fall of the Chiao family's business empire and the transmission of traditional Chinese commercial culture and ethics. Whether it was Cixi's humiliating flight or Chiao Zhiyong's wisdom in handling the situation, these stories are embedded in the stone walls and carvings of the courtyard. Although the Chiao family has long since passed, the spirit of the Shangxi merchants they embodied continues to influence future generations. This is the History and Culture Channel. Liking and subscribing are the greatest help and support to us. Thank you everyone and see you in the next time.